Hello everyone, this is Sweet Sour once again, and I have a special video for today that was actually a request, and the person was wondering how I created the circular icons that I use for my totem duration aura collection. And so, it's not too difficult, I figured I'd give you a quick run through, but uh, just to start, you want to go to wowinterface.com and check out clean icons. They're the icons that I actually used for all of the icons in my auras. Originally, I was using the standard Blizzard ones, but with the uh, like the uh, the borders that they have around them, I just found them it became too clunky. So I ended up using the thin version. So just the clean square with barely any kind of a border just made it look so much more slick. Like overall and there are different kinds that you can actually get like different versions so you can get crisp original and these are like little previews of what they look like so you just click on them and they'll go to the respective site to uh, download this those as well if that's what you want to do so I've already clicked the download button and I've already downloaded them just for simplicity's sake so yep thank you very much so in here contains interface folder icons and I think it's yeah, there you go. So this is like every single icon in the game. There are tons and tons of it, of the icons. So I have already extracted it. I decided to do it in my documents and then made a custom folder. And this is where I actually placed the folder. So this is, you know, all my other stuff. I'll show get to that in a moment. But anyways, I go into interface, icons, and here we are. Now, there's obviously a lot of icons to go through, and a lot of them don't really have the same names of the spells that you're after. So an easy way to get around that is you go to Wowhead, and you click or you search for whatever ability you want. And in this case, I searched up Lava Burst. And to find the string of the icon, it's just right here on the right. So it would be spell underscore shaman underscore Lava Burst. Alternatively, you can click on this icon. It'll give you the same information. You know, just in case that's not there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back into this folder. Or wait, no, so we're, we're going to skip that. We're going to go to wowprogramming.com. So what we do from here is we go to utils. Because what, what's, what's happening here is these BLP files cannot be read by Photoshop. And that's going to be our last step in all this is making all the modifications that we need to create the files that we want, but obviously we need something that Photoshop can read. So, while well, programming actually has a function called BLP to PNG, which we're going to use. So we're going to choose a file, and obviously it's already pointing at the, same, the right place, so we can actually just put in Lava Burst in the search, and there it is. That's obviously something else. I think it's something to do with the mop spell, but I doubt it's the right one. So anyways, you click on it, open, convert, simple. So you just right-click that, save it, and then you open it with Photoshop. Now, I've already done that, so now we're going to get to it. And the first thing that I did to kind of make it a little easier for myself to create the, the circular selection is I created some guides. So you go to View, you go down to New Guide, and we've got to set up two, Horizontal and Vertical. So seeing as the icons are 64 pixels, vertically and horizontally. Yes, there's my cat, very vocal. Anyway, so half of 64 is obviously 32. And then we got to do another one, but horizontally. Now, we need to get a zoomed in look, so just press control zero, and that'll bring everything nice and close. So now we got to use the selection tool. So we go here, up, and normally it's the rectangular marquee tool, we well, click and hold and go to elliptical marquee tool. And what you want to do is you want to get your cursor nice and perfectly lined up like that. Hold alt, hold shift, click and drag. So this is just going to make it so it expands outwards. And something seems to have gone wrong. Oh, oh, I'm holding cap locks. Okay, that explains it. Sorry. Let's try that again. Uh All right, oops, Alt-Shift. All right, so now if you can see on the right, I got information going. And on the right side, it says 60 to 60. So I'm going to leave it at that. 
So basically I'm getting everything but these black borders. So now what we need to do is we need to create a dummy layer. So we're going to create a new layer and make sure it's on top of the old one. Now using this selection, we we need to fill it because this is what we're going to be doing to create the border of the icon. So you go to edit and fill. You can also do shift F5. And for the border, I decided to go with a dark gray. Um, I'll provide all information in the description of the video below. So anyways, we got the foreground color. We want the opacity to the normal. We click OK, and it's, a, it's filled. Now we need to actually create the border. So what we need to do now is go to Select, Modify, Contract. So we're just contracting the selection. We're going to contract it by three pixels. So now we just made it like that. And you making sure that the we saw this selection of that layer, you click or you press the delete button. And there you go. Now we have our ring. Now moving on, press uh control D to deselect. And now we're gonna use the magic wand tool. So we click that, and then this still being selected, just in case you've unselected it, select anywhere outside of the ring. You do that and it automatically selects everything that we need. But the thing is, we need to get rid of all this stuff, right? So what we want to do now is we want to invert our selection. So we need to do that pressing Control, Shift, and I. So now the selection's around this circle. So what we need to do now is we need to select our main layer, and then click the Create a Mask, or Add a Layer Mask button. There. And everything around it is gone. So we're almost there. What we need to do now is we need to kind of give our border a little bit of texture because it kind of looks flat and plain. So I've already created the layer style, but I'll add it here. So there, it's giving it a little bit of a pop to it. So let me just go in here and I'll show you what effects I've actually done. Actually, real quick. Uh, how, if you don't know how to do this, you would right-click the, uh, the layer and go to Blending Options. So I've added an inner shadow. And just to quickly look at these settings, this is what I use. Size of 1, distance 4 pixels, 30 degree light, and 75% opacity. And then I use bevel and emboss. Once again, just take a look at all the settings. Alright, good to go. So, now we need to merge everything together. So we need to select both layers, and right click Merge Visible. Now if we flatten an image, it's going to take all this transparency out and it's going to become white and then it won't be the way we want it to. So merge visible. Now we need to make sure for the next part we need to have this selected. So this thumbnail of the icon, you want to hold control and then click it. And it automatically selects everything that we need to select. Next, we need to add what's called an alpha channel. So right here beside the layer tab is channels. And so you have your RGB channels and whatnot. So what you want to do now is you want to click the create a new la uh, layer or alpha. And we still have our selection. So we need to actually fill this selection with white. I'll explain in just a moment. So white is always set to the foreground when you're creating a new alpha channel. So you just need to go to edit, fill, and done. So what's happening here is the way that the WOWS graphic engine works in terms of icons is for transparency, <clears throat> excuse me, for transparency to work, anything that's black in the alpha channel will be ignored by the graphical engine, whereas white will be the thing that's being read. So basically, the only thing being read from this file is going to be the white. So now if we go back to the layer, er, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, we can just click the RGB button. But while we have the alpha channel selected, you'll see the pink there. And that's what you want to see. That's no you've done everything right. But you can uncheck the alpha channel. It's Everything's fine. So that's basically all there is to it. But what thing, one thing we need to do for the game to actually read our icon correctly is we can't save it as a PNG file as we've you know brought it into Photoshop as. So we need to actually save it as... a targa file, TGA. And you want to make sure that you have alpha channel selected. If you don't do that, then the whole idea of transparency is going to be gone. So you click save, and then you have this, resolution. 
Once again, 32 bits is the only selection you can do that will support transparency. If you're dealing with a, t a, t a Targa file that does not have transparency, then trans or sorry, 24 bits will be work fine. I personally just do 32 bits all the time. I don't bother about compressing. So you save it, and all that's great. Now, one thing we can do to make I'm just gonna go all the way back. All right. Um, All right. There's a fun feature in Photoshop that a lot of people don't know about. That's called actions, where basically you can record a set of actions and then just play them back over again. So we're going to show you how to do that. So what you want to do is you want to open up your actions window. If you can't find it, go to window, actions. So then you'll get this this window here. And so we want to create a new action. So we'll just name it. Uh, I can't sample. You can put it into like these. These are the folders here. So you could put it under a subfolder for organizational purposes. And then you hit record. And that means you're recording. So now we just need to go through the steps once again. So you don't need to set up guides when you're doing the recording. Yes, thank you, cat. Um, so if you've already had them set up before recording the action, it's going to be easier. So that's why I've kept them there. So we're going to go back to the elliptical tool and hopefully get this first try or whatever. All right. Alt, shift, click, drag to 60 pixels. Let go. See, now it says set selection. And now we need to create a new layer. I made a new layer. And now we need to fill. Okay, and then we need to contract by three pixels and then delete and then control D to deselect magic wand tool thank you cat oh he's so vocal um, all right so then anywhere outside to select and then control shift I go away I'm recording anyways yeah so now we have the inverted selection and so now we need to create our mask. So apply our add layer mask. Oh, sorry, we gotta select this first. And now click it. Cool. So using the same um what is uh, ah geez, layer styles, we would right click the layer and go to paste. So then it's, it's already got that all back on. It's got paste styles, all that what fun stuff. All right. Now we're ready to merge visible. So you right click, merge visible. Okay. And then we want to select the entirety of the icon. So control click the thumbnail. So we've set the selection. Go to channels. No. Jeez. Hey. All right. Um, and then create an alpha channel. Is everything still selected? Good. Fill. Fill with white. And then instead of like clicking the RGB channel, you can actually just click the channel. And if you want, you can deselect. And then you're done. So you press stop. So that's everything recorded. So what I'm going to do, just to show you how that works now, is I'm going to go all the way back to where we started again. There. All right. So now to run the action is you just click on it, and then you hit the play button. Hmm. That doesn't look right. Where did, where did the paste styles go? That is really weird. Uh, okay. Um, that's really weird that I didn't go through the first time. What is happening? All right. Well, that's the general idea. Like, I know my first one will work. Yeah. So this is this one. Blah blah blah. Done. All right. So, 
it's not overly difficult. You can obviously experiment and customize things yourselves a little bit. But that's really all there is to it. You just got to make sure you save it as a Targa file. And then, actually what I should say before we leave, is once you have all this saved, is you have to import it into your... Your, your WoW directory. So, obviously you gotta go to the WoW directory, go to interface, oops, and then there's the icons folder. If that's not already there, you have to right click anywhere, create new folder, create icons, and you can put folders in there for organizational purpose like I did, but anywhere here, you can place the icons. And if you have placed the icons there while the game is open, you will have to close the game completely, reopen it for the game to actually register the new icons. So hopefully that was pretty straightforward for everyone. If you have any other questions, comment down below or get a hold of me through Battle.net, sweet sour, hashtag 11996. And thanks again, guys, for watching and being a part of my Week Auras compilations, if you already are. I'm looking forward to adding the artifact talents that will be coming out in Legion. So that is going to be an oncoming, ongoing process. So take care, guys, and thanks for watching.